Lord, for the Lord, and for Gideon. And don't forget, they did all of this without a single weapon in their hands. Terrified, the Midianites fled, accidentally attacking each other as they went. In fact, they ran so far from the battlefield that other Israelites were able to capture and defeat the leaders of the Midianites. With the enemy leaders gone and their army running away, God had saved Israel, just like he said he would. And that's the story of Gideon. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Israel turned away from God. God reminded them he was in charge. God said he would save Israel. He would use Gideon. God performed miracles for Gideon. Gideon gathered an army. God made it smaller, much smaller. Soldiers had a dream. Gideon's army surprised their enemies. The Midianites ran away. God used Gideon to save Israel. And that's a part of God's story. So after watching the video, did that story sound more familiar to some of you guys? Uh, no, because it's my first time. That's the first time you heard that story? Some yeah. answer, some knows. So Gideon, he had this really big army, right? But God shortened it a little bit because he wanted people to know that it was God who was saving Israel, not Gideon. But if you read in your, in your Bible at home, in your Bible, when the angel first comes to Gideon, this is what it says. I'll, I'll read it to you. Uh, where'd it go? Oh, yes. It says in Judges 6... When the angel comes to Gideon and said, God is going to use you to lead him a people and free the people, Gideon said, listen, my family is a very small family, and we're not very popular, and I am the least important person in my family. Gideon didn't think he could do it. Gideon didn't think he was qualified to do what God wanted him to do. If the people came to Gideon or if the people, the Israelites themselves were looking for a leader, nobody would have probably picked Gideon. Just like nobody would have probably picked Deborah. But God knew that those were the people who would be willing to do what he wants them to do, what he asked them to do. And they had great success in, in freeing Israel. So no matter who you are, no matter where you've been, no matter what's going on, God can use you. Even you guys right now. Even in your schools, even in your neighborhoods, even in all summer long this past summer, we talked about being a superhero for God, right? Do you guys remember that? We talked about all summer long about that. And God can use you guys to be a superhero and tell people about him. Yes, Elijah. It doesn't sound so nice, but it is. It doesn't sound so nice. It can sound a little scary, right? So it can sound a little bit scary. I'm sure Deborah and Gideon and all these other judges were maybe a little sounds, bit scared at first. Sounds like he's trying to use you. Use you for use Not in a bad way. Not yeah. in a bad way. But in a good way, right? It just sounds like it. It sounds like it. So I'm going to show how God helped these judges out. The first one, Othniel, God used to go to battle and save Israel. Now it's the first guy. Oh, I'm going to talk about him, yeah. I'll talk about him in a minute. Actually, let me go back. Yeah, another guy who is, this is another judge in the Bible. It's, it's pretty crazy. Who is left-handed? Is anybody in here left-handed? I'm right-handed, so. I'm left-handed. I'm left-handed. You're left-handed? Yeah. I don't write like. You're left-handed, so it's really Janet? Annoying it, it's just Janie. Okay, sorry, Janet. You're left-handed. It's Sunday school, Annie Janet. I'm both. Okay. Well, how, since you're here, how about you tell the story? How about you tell the story of that other judge? My favorite story. Your favorite story. All right, she's gonna tell us. A, she's gonna tell us a story about another one of the judges. So pay attention. Go ahead. Where, where did you go? I'm special. She disappeared. Yeah. Hello. She went down. Sunday school lady Janet. What? Where are you going? Shh. The one up to tell the story. Go ahead, tell the story, Sunday school lady Janet. All right, well, I'll tell the my version. Okay. So, there was a judge named Ehud. Everybody, everybody paying attention? His name was what? Ehud. Ehud. He, had, he was left-handed, right? The Bible talks about how he was left-handed. Yes. Okay, go on. 
Now, continue on. There was an evil king, right? And Ehud was going to save the Israelites from the evil king. See a pattern? Ehud, the Israelites. Yeah, the, the Israelites did wrong. They got captive, and then God sent somebody to save them. Yep. So what he did was he scheduled a meeting with the king. And what he did is, I have a secret for you. And so what? He had a sword stuck hidden in his hand. And while the king, the king was fat. Jehoshaphat. That's what they look like. Jehoshaphat. No, it wasn't Jehoshaphat. That's like my sister. His name was uh, Eglon, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. And so what he, what Ehud did was come here. And he stabbed him right in the belly. Oh my God! I bet that didn't even hurt him. Maybe he'll so get off that way. And then he left. Wait, so can I do that to Mr. I bet it didn't even no, hurt him. No, 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 no. And then, because the guards were outside, because the king said, "Leave us." They thought. You want to know what they, he thought? What? They thought they were pooping. Oh, okay. <laughs> Goodbye. So this old lady, that it. You should not be telling Bible stories ever again. Yeah, okay. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. That's enough. Thank you. Oh, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> I mean, she's not wrong. It's crazy. He's in judges. But, yes, Elijah. Um, I bet I didn't even hurt the fat dude because he was so fat. Ah, uh, well, yeah. Talk yeah, about just it. Right there. Right here. So, it, she's, okay. she's not wrong. It's in Judges 3. If Ehud was a left-handed man... And it was something that was distinctive back in the Bible times. It wasn't very common. It wasn't very common in the Bible times. And so often we can see our unique characteristics. You guys all know you guys are all unique, right? Mm -hmm. None of you guys are the same. You guys are not robotic. Are not robots. You don't all look the same. You don't act the same. Mm -hmm. We don't talk the same. Yeah, that's you're, like me and my friend at You're school. all, yeah, like our we, friends at school. One person... Like, be rude to us, we, we jump them. Oh, yeah. Don't be jumping people. But we can see our unique characteristics as like square bad things. People can say, man, I'm, I'm not like so-and-so. That's a bad thing. And they can get all sad and, and, and upset about it. But we should not complain about our differences. We should use our unique abilities to help people and to serve God. Ehud did. He wasn't, he didn't complain that he was left-handed at all. His other friends are right-handed. He did what God asked him to do. So, like we talked about, Ehud was left-handed and not coming back then. God makes all of us different to do the job he has for all of us to do. Um, and Shamgar, God used him to help defeat the Philistines. We talked about that earlier. Deborah, I talked about this already too, was a leader who was a girl who was way different back in those days. People thought God only used men, but God can use boys and girls. Boys just have more upper body strength. Yeah, that's not true. I know some pretty strong girls who have more hey, 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 hey. Don't so, talk yeah. about Thea. <laughs> so, God can use boys and girls. And we talk about Gideon, about how his family was a... Gideon was like, my family's not any good. I'm, I'm the least of my family. But God still used him in mighty, mighty ways. And then Tola and Jared God used to have 45 years of peace where everything was okay. Everything wasn't too bad. They talked about it in the Bible. How every time as judges were not so bad. But Jeff, uh, God, he had a really, he, but people bullied him for his family background. I never got bullied. These guys came up to Jeff uh, and said, hey, they, it's, in, it's in the Bible. I read it this week. They talked to me, pretty much bullied him and told him how he was no good, how his family was no good. I want to get bullied. But then when they got into trouble, when people came and took him captive, they were like, oh, we're so sorry. We're so sorry. Can you please help us? And he ended up helping them. And, but God knew everything about him and still used him. We don't, I know sometimes we make mistakes, right? We've all done bad things that we... Do well. We've all done bad things. Nice. The Bible talks about that. We've all messed up. We've all sinned. Sometimes that guilt that we feel, sometimes we think, God can't use me because of all the bad things that I've done. 
God can't use, I can't do what God wants me to do because I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. Boys and girls, God knows all that stuff. But he loves us, he forgives us, and he still wants to use us. Even with all of our fingers in our past. Yes, Ashley. What? No. So God can still use us no matter what we've done in our past. These last three, the Bible only mentions them one time in the whole Bible. And the people say that they are often seen as lesser, as less important, because they're only mentioned one time. In a very short verse. Not even, not even a chapter, not even two verses. One verse. And they're all grouped together. And as I was reading it, and as I was looking at it and learning, people say that these three guys are often viewed as less important because they're not as famous as people like Samson, Gideon, was probably the two the most famous judges in the book of Judges. And so they say these three are less important because they weren't in the hot and in the in the headlines. They weren't in the spotlight. And sometimes we can try to compare ourselves to other people. And say, well, how come they're getting all the attention and nobody's realizing what I'm doing? We have people in the church who love to help. They love to help. They don't like to be up front like I am right now. If I if I were to ask them to be up front, they'd be like, no, thank you. No, it's not for me. What they like to do is they like to be behind the scenes. They like to help. They're not in the spotlight. Does that make them any less important? No. No. It means that they're kind. Yeah, if it means they're kind, it means they're better. They like to be in the background. That's our comfort zone. That, that, makes them, that doesn't make them less important. So when we see our friends, when we see other kids who you see you're doing all these cool things, we don't have to compare ourselves to them. Ada talked about that last summer, about comparison on a Sunday night. This because, that's what the scholars said, the people who study the Bible, they said these three are often seen as less important. But that's just not true. And God still used them in mighty ways, even if they were only mentioned one time. And as a matter of fact, they also say that these three guys were judges way longer than anybody else. These three were, yeah, way longer.